Good morning. It's um, Saturday the 6th of April 2019 and this is Richard Swatton in Bristol. Um, I decided today to do a video on the 1066 chart of England. Um, this is prompted by the uh, leak in the House of Commons at the moment from the roof after a rather uh, strong period of rain. Uh, floods came in, floods of uh, uh, water came in from the roof and the proceedings had to be stopped. Now in the uh, over coming days uh, in the newspapers there was a lot said about this that is this symbolic something to do with leaks and so on although it wasn't taken up very seriously. But putting my Jungian hat on and that um, this is a very considerable uh, moment in the time of uh, English or British history and indeed the history of the UK itself. Uh, such omenic um, uh, appearances in the outside world are, can be rather serious or, or perhaps should be taken a little bit more seriously. Um, such images as that, the flooding of the Houses of Parliament uh, to, to, that stops the, the uh, processes going on in there, that rain stops play as it were, uh, can be considerably important. Uh, and the omen-like quality of it, uh, everybody feels it instinctively. Now, uh, we, one needn't take it as, as prediction so much as something that's triggered off in, a, in the symbolic world of our own imaginations and our own mythic understanding. We feel that something is being told through it. And I would like to look at that in relation to the 1066 chart, what it's telling us, and to have a look at the transits at the time of operation at uh, uh, this in the 1066 chart. Now, 1066 chart, as many people will know, is the uh, coronation chart of William the Conqueror, who defeated Harold in 1066, the Battle of Hastings. Every schoolboy should know that uh, basic thing, and in fact, that basic piece of history. And uh, at age 11, uh, at uh, Trusnant Junior School, uh, myself and a lot of other people uh, went for uh, a trip to uh, France and, and we were introduced to the Bayer Tapestry. So I've seen it for myself and I remember the trip very well. So what I would like to do now is uh, share this chart and have a look at what might be going on in it. And I hope to bring that up now, and I hope that now you can all see um, uh, uh, my, my, what is on my screen, which as you can see is the 1066 chart set up for um, uh, 12 p.m. on this particular day in 1066. Now, national charts are a bit uh, sporadic in their uh, ability to show things. Um, and so in which case any person doing mundane astrology, any person doing horary astrology, and indeed natal astrology as well, there is one needs to test the chart. It is called proving the chart, what used to be called uh, proving it, to see if the symbolic validity of these placements actually come out and can be demonstrated to be active, to be alive. And once again, I've been uh, going on and on about the theme of radicality and signification. Um, and I'm not going to do a detailed analysis of this chart because I want to get on to the transits, particularly the Neptune transit, which is here at 17 degrees of, of Pisces, opposite exactly the Saturn, which often, which are obviously re represents the leaks. But I'd like to see what it might be about. So first of all, then, let's try and have, have a look at this chart to see if there are any provings on it to prove its validity over, over uh, history. Uh, there are many, many such things one can look back in history, but there's one or two which I'd like to point out. June 6, 19, 2016, Uranus was on the ascendant here, um, and that was the time we had the divorce from, or the uh, referendum, and uh, what happened was a surprise result, classic of uh, Uranus, uh, uh, to do with uh, foreign lands here, to do with uh, our relation to other communities, the world, and so on, and it... Uh, it conjoined the first house, and Uranus is classically known as the planet of divorce. Uh, 
Underneath what it means is that structures have to change. The set procedures um, are, are, are of our lives, usually in mid the midlife crisis, for example, Uranus comes to oppose its own place. And the, the set structures, the way we've been seeing the world is often undergoing some kind of change. So when, when Uranus um, comes across there, there's a, um, a, a sense that we need to break from the past. The ascendant, uh, symbolically, represents birth. It's the, the way we birth ourselves, and so it's the presentation of personality, also the way we view our, the, the world. And it's classic in its implication that there was some kind of break, some kind of divorce, some kind of a, a outbreak, if you like, of something uh, that was uh, ready. It, was, it, it had been in the 12th house, brewing there. Then it came across the ascendant, and suddenly, against all the odds, against all the predictions and all the poles, there was this undercurrent, this undercurrent of feeling in the majority of the country that joining or continuing a further integration with the European Union might not be such a good thing. Now, um, as a, an experiment in uh, 2012, uh, in a small book looked in titled to Symbol to Substance, I discussed the, briefly discussed the Pluto transit of the sun. And uh, as you can see in the chart here, we have a a grand trine. And that was the basis of what I was going to say because uh, in this booklet, because I thought that the Pluto transit of the sun would herald a grand transformation of the English national identity. Obviously it involves the royals, it involves the government as the sun, as the and the tenth house of any of any national chart represents the government in power. Uh, the sun represents kind of like the monarch or the king um, uh, underneath, or the ruling power, the ruling dominant, the president, the uh, in this case, the prime minister. So it, 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 this signification holds several things. So here we have then uh, Pluto moving past this in 2012. And this is what I wrote. The Earth Grand Trine indicates a powerful island mentality. A strong emphasis in the psyche of the nation towards a practical self-sufficiency and self-reliance. Also, a strong defensive resistance to unwelcome involvement from other countries. The island mentality of an island sets itself up as a kind of isolated, self-protected moat, if you like, all around, protecting us during the um, Second World War, of course. But it seems to the 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 uh, geography of a place is imbues its people with a certain uh, essential elements and this island mentality persists and we can see this strong defensive resistance um, to to uh, preventing anybody anybody infiltrating or, or uh, because England is, <laughs> has been a series of uh, infiltrations and wars and so on especially from Rome around about fourth century second to fourth century and 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 all of that invasions from other uh, countries and this although the European Union isn't an invasion it's in fact it's a it's an invitation to belong to something larger a, 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 a super national body, a bureaucratic, uh, secular, national political body, which is going to set itself up as a, as a, as a kind of um, a, a super state which can look after its own and prevent wars of nation states. We looked at this as, as a, you know, the Maastricht Treaty had its son in Scorpio in the fourth house, representing the death of the national state, of the individual nation states. But let's get back to this one. This Saturn is in Virgo. This Mercury is in Capricorn. <coughs> you can see that therefore they are in one another's signs and they're said to be in mutual reception, very, very uh, near um, to exact placement. And so I would say this is the strongest aspect in this chart. It is to do with education. It is to do with control. And you see here in the sixth house to do with administration in Virgo, particulars, uh, uh, particulars of administration, very, very powerful placement is Sam. Although it's retrograde, um, uh, I, I think that this strong placement sets itself up as a, a person that speaks for itself, a person that knows its own boundaries and its own borders. 
it and uh, has a strong as i say defensive resistance to to two things because it knows that there, that there there can be a kind of weakness here and i think that this neptune um you know represented uh, neptune in taurus represented the the wealth of the nation being a savior to the nation so a grand trine then whenever this is hit off with a uh, a strong outer planet transit we're opening up if you like this very powerful defensive structure so what noel till talked about in the in the 70s and early 80s his marvelous uh, series of books and principles and practice of astrology and then repeated that um in in his wonderful book uh holistic astrology in which he defines the grand trine as a a defensive circuit within the personality because it's so powerful in the element the element dominates and once again that that puts um puts form to what i was saying that the, the it represents a practical self-sufficiency very very difficult to penetrate very very isolating but a, a powerful in itself in natal astrology it would be a very uh, strong sub-personality uh, which which resists um relating and starts to rely on itself the element of course gives you the general showing of where it appears in the personality so a strong defensive resistance to unwelcome involvement from other countries yet with the upcoming conjunction of transiting pluto to the sun and then mercury and then cracking open the grand trine from 2012 to 2022 all of these structures and images of the english national identity will undergo upheaval and transformation a royal succession will probably take place the closed castle of the Grand Trine will come under siege, either leading to a strong revival of traditional values or a complete collapse of the entire system, followed by a new beginning. Those words were written in 2012 and referred to the Pluto coming up to here, somehow challenging the national identity, the sun, the very principle of its power, its uniqueness, or what is uh, the, the word coming up today is sovereignty. And then during these supposed negotiations of the last two years, Pluto has been on Mercury negotiating away. Nothing has come of it of course and now it continues and is within uh, uh it's within aspect now a trying to this uh, uh neptune here and representing obviously the leaks the water the flooding something is breaking open this grand trine and there's a ground swell of of of, of fears and things coming through it because the the, the 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 national identity the walls the closed castle of the nation is now being flooded if you like with with other 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 um other paths other developments which will mean an inevitable death of its isolationism the moon in pisces here in the 12th house often refers to that even in an angel chart of a, a sense that the world is too much for it um the uh the the people itself the you know in, in pisces there's a kind of weakness a, a frailty underneath yes there are powerful structures of identity and um a government uh, I, I like all this capricorn stuff but the the neptune here uh, opposed to chiron there's an inherent weakness it's been invaded before and so it feels that its island its isolation its withdrawal from involvement with 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 the world is occasionally required in an individual's chart this would mean a person that really does need to find a place of retreat or withdrawal uh, whether that's in meditation or actual spiritual retreats or some some place where they can go to renew and refresh their energies because the the twelfth house often refers to the imposition of collective of, of the powers of the collective working through the individual, and here it represents it is represented through the people of the country, which is the moon. So this Pluto was already charging up here, and this was before even the rev. I mentioned this before even the uh the referendum was um going to be had and as such bang on time we've had the referendum as uh pluto was on here and is now marching towards venus now improving a chart 
we must look back to other times. And I've just looked back to a couple of interesting things in this chart that I thought I might mention. You see here, this Uranus is in the, uh, is in the uh, sign of so-called religion, in the house of religion, also the judicial system. But Uranus in here is square to this moon. This means that any close tie any close tie uh, eventually has a feeling of uh, uh, um, a claustrophobia about it. Uranus is, is that in us which um, seeks to break the new, break down the new, uh, break, sorry, break through into the new. And uh, it's destined here in a way to go out on its own, England, eventually from the, um, from the powers of Rome. Now, I had a look, actually, at the, when the Reformation was supposedly began. Um, of course, the Reformation was a whole period of time, right, from Luther in, uh, 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 in, the, in Europe. But the, our Reformation, the uh, placing this act of supremacy uh, by King Henry VIII, um, uh, took place, and uh, um, I can't remember the actual date here, but I looked at the transits. And what was operating at that time was Neptune was actually square to this Uranus uh, moon. And so that represented a breakaway. Also at the time in the chart of the Reformation, we've got Jupiter-Pluto opposed to Saturn. So there was this sense of a breaking away of, of, of becoming our own country. And so England or Angleterre became the Anglican tradition eventually. So it was a break away from the Church of Rome. And this Uranus here represents that. Um, the well-known uh, mystic and uh, speaker uh, Krishnamurti had this uh, placement of Uranus in the 11th. And what he was proposing at the turn of the, well, actually well, around about the 1930s, was that he, he was saying that you no longer have to have a formal religion in order to become spiritual. Uh, this has been well known, but you, you need these speakers to say so. So he was anti-religion in a way, anti the formalization of spiritual practice. So he was achieving a, a radical view that saying there was a new religion. He was heralded as the Maitreya, the the uh, speaker of the almost the, re, the the return, I suppose, of the of a divine deity, the Maitreya, the world teacher. Um, he denied that title, by the way, and and uh, left the Theosophical Society. But his his unique and shifting um, perspective was upon the fact that every individual inside themselves had what they needed in order to move move beyond into a transcendent reality, into an awareness of something else that he called, of course, the, the achievement of a choiceless awareness, which is um, very similar to a, a Taoistic understanding of moving along with the uh, configurations and movements of the Tao within one or the, the movement of the universal energy. So this Uranus here always set up and so we see Neptune squared and the Reformation happens. Another interesting thing I looked up was Princess Diana. And uh, the, uh, the 31st of August in uh, 1997, and we saw Neptune coming right up to this Venus. It was about 27, 28, right on this Venus. And um, when Diana died, she was uh, shown, she, she was, given that label, um, Queen of Hearts. And uh, there were other things in that chart which opposed uh, the, the royalty here. And so I don't want to confuse this too much, but one can have a look at those uh, elements for oneself. Chiron was also uh, um, a square to this, this Venus. And it was as if at that time, something in the heart of the nation about the princess to be, Neptune um, dissolved her. Uh, uh, she she um, was was um, uh, she was killed in in uh, um, very confusing and uh, circumstances. There have been a lot of conspiracy theories, and whenever you get Neptune, there's often conspiracy theories. 
I've talked a lot about uh, Watergate, actually, again in this uh, booklet, and, and talking about Neptune as the significator of Watergate itself. And in President Nixon's chart, it was opposed his son. A very interesting line of um, uh, analysis. Okay, so let's have a look here, sorry about that, at uh, the Neptune opposition to Saturn. Right now, Neptune is um, is about 17 degrees of uh, Virgo and uh, sorry of uh, Pisces Virgo Pisces axis obviously and it's on um, Theresa May's Jupiter so Jupiter uh, lies on the uh, British uh, Saturn here and uh, and uh, so therefore these two are operating together Neptune represents potential in us the the unformed stuff of our our, our world um uh, to be in terms of materialization capricorn the goat fish is half the fish half neptune and half saturnian it represents the the process of transforming potential of the sea into the material existence of land so making something uh, uh, incarnate bringing things into operation within incarnate reality so when Neptune opposes this Saturn, it's not surprising, is it, that the structures, the, um, the power, the defensive resistance is starting to be flooded by a kind of deluge. This, in, in the chart of somebody, um, or in the dreams of somebody who, who would dream of floods or, or, or something like that, often at middle age, is undergoing the experience where they're having to review how, they've, um, how they're seeing the world. The structure of defensiveness within the system is being, is being inundated. It is being flooded. Um, I've often liked, likened Neptune transits to... Um, you, you, you can see the process in operation. If you put a piece of tissue paper, let's say, into some water, uh, into a tank of water, eventually you'll see it kind of dissipate. And it, it, uh, uh, maybe if the, if the tank of water is, strong, is, is large enough, the whole tissue paper will eventually disappear. And there's no way you can piece it together. It's like something flooded of you. You know, as anybody has known when you drop some water on a book it, it floods and you can never iron it out again it it, it, it the, the substance has seeped in and it starts to change in the alchemical process they call this the salutio in which things are pummeled down and then uh, a liquid is brought to bear um, it's flooded in liquid if you like and that slowly softens the um the, the 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 strength the the binding agents here of saturn so this is an aspect of the grand trine being broken into saturn off will often represents the structure the building the law and uh, a, a sense of being in control so we must watch out here because this is a caution this is a caution that um uh, tension is now so powerful that the unconscious uh, elements of Neptune are flooding in, enough to stop government's um, uh, business. I do feel, uh, and I um, again, another proving of this chart is when I took it back 165 years, Neptune uh, placement would have been exactly the same or near to exact 165 years ago. And I had a look at that. A very interesting thing. It happens in 1854, and uh, that particular year, although it had been going on for several years before, that particular year was the was the outbreak of cholera in Broad Street. Now, if you know my other videos, uh, it's now Broadwood Street in London in Soho. And it's interesting enough, it, where Golden Square is now, was the, was the, the outbreak was there. So cholera has a lot to do with dirty water. 
has a lot to do with the contamination of water. People were given water to drink. I think it was something the maybe the Vauxhall, I think in my history is right, the Vauxhall Water Company didn't quite um, filter the water properly. So there was polluted water given to people. And this is very much, again, breaking down the structure so uh, there is a corollary here, and a corollary, there's a parallel here with 165 years ago that this Saturn, when opposed by Neptune, there was an outbreak of, of a disease in the country brought upon by polluted water. And so what I'm seeing again is the breakdown of the structure. We've had Pluto on the sun. We've had Pluto trine this Saturn. Now Neptune is somehow making it fluid. It's, it's making it loose and people feel afraid as they do do in midlife uh, when Neptune squares its own place, Uranus opposes its own place. It represents the beginning of something inside, a, a whole process inside in which things are being um, softened, released. But whenever Saturn the structural elements of, of our own body, the skeleton, the uh, sense of our defensive resistance, the skin, if you like, the protective layer to the outside world. That is, uh, that is under siege too here. The battle defenses, if you like, have been flooded and there's leaks all over the place. This often represents also scandal, which uh, we, uh, I would uh, certainly suggest will be upon us sooner rather than later. Anyway, questions or comments would be appreciated and I hope that, um, if I just come out of there, uh, I, I hope that that's been informative uh, and any, as I say, any comments would be appreciated. Cheerio for now.